so I got this new kettle well, it's new to me I had a neighbor that had this sitting out in her yard and it was kind of leaned over to the side up against the fence and, and uh, she came by the other day and I asked her if she'd sell it to me she said you can have it because the leg won't stay on it and so I'm gonna get it cooking again it's been sitting for years but it's a Weber kettle I don't know what year but the handles are off of it the uh it must have gotten hit by a tree limb or something because it, it kind of sits crooked there this one leg was bent all the way in it wouldn't stand up so i didn't i didn't video straighten that up but i just took the, the pole off and and hit this out straightened it up with a with a hammer we'll need to straighten it up a little bit more work on some of the others and some of those may be bent too but this uh, bottom rack was bent and I straightened it by hand but that's popped out I'm gonna have to straighten this back up and weld it back together it's missing the, the ash pan um, the inside's really rough uh, probably gonna I don't know if that grate's salv salvageable or not but uh, to clean it up the sweepers are are totally gone out of it. Got to get some new sweepers. Um, it's the old style, original style. With no handle. It's really stiff. So I may uh, clean up under that, or may have to drill that out and put a put a uh, stainless steel bolt in it to loosen that up. But the plan is, you can see that's bent. That handle got hit by something. It's got handles on both sides, which. It's a little different than, than mine. So what the plan is, I'm going to take some parts off of my kettle, which I have right here. Maybe the handles and uh, the grate on the inside and the, the ash catcher. And I'm going to I'm gonna order some new parts for this one. Just take the old grates and put it in this one. So uh, that's going to... Um, and I'm planning on getting the the uh basket style i don't know what that's called but the uh that comes on the more expensive models and upgrading this to the basket the little pan that comes out with that dump the ash and put it back in um and then using this pan over here on this this old one so i gotta get it cleaned up got some work to do but i'll i'll uh, video it as i go so with just a good little scrape out not even a cleaning it just doesn't look like this kettle saw a ton of use. If you look at the inside of the lid. It's got a little bit. I mean, a lot of that's just from sitting in cobwebs and things. But there's not a lot of buildup of, I guess you call it creosote. Just the, the soot. It builds up on the inside of the lid so I'm I'm thinking this this grill wasn't, wasn't used a ton and uh, the lady said she had bought a new model uh, that had the little pan on the ash catcher on the bottom and she said it's like a Cadillac so uh, she just kind of set this aside and didn't worry about it anymore so um, yeah I'm gonna burn it out clean this grate it's still a little rusty I'm just gonna burn this this out real, real hot with a hot with some hot lump and I uh, let it cook for a little while and get real good and hot I'm probably going to use this grate for something might work good for my uh, pizza attachment or something if I can get it cleaned up a little more I might be willing to use it but it's still a little rusty looking but if I can get that cleaned up when I get it good and hot and oil it up might be might be usable and i noticed this this sitting sitting off like that we're supposed to be attached over here and then the bend i think that's affecting the way this is sitting so i think if i can get this straight kind of see how it pulls everything over um, see if i can get that uh fixed i, I think it's upside down i think somebody I think this is supposed to be on the bottom. That weld is supposed to be on the bottom. So uh, that might affect it a little bit too, how it's sitting, sitting a little crooked. So I uh, might have to take that, that axle off and straighten all these bars out. Re 
attach it the right way because I think that's supposed to be on the bottom. Right. Got a couple of bottom of the bags of lump. So I'm just going to throw the bags and all a little lighter fluid I had in there that I don't ever use. So that's going to we're going to burn this kettle out a little bit. Right, I've had this going for about an hour. I've added a few extra coals to it. Uh, just to get it good and hot. Sprayed down the grate with some cooking spray. Scrubbed it off real good. I, I think this grate's going to be usable. Probably more than just a little pizza as an attachment. I can tell the difference in this grate. And my other one, I checked the code on it. This one was made in 1985. It's a G-code stamped mine uh, that I purchased and been using the last uh, seven years. It uh, was made in 14. So that's about right. It's made in 14. I bought it in 15. And I've been using it ever since. So it's an AH code. So I've never looked those up before. But this one is 85. This grade is quite a bit heavier than the one that came with mine. So this is closer to my Weber Smoky Mountain grate. Might even be a little heavier than that. So I don't know. There's a way to look up the difference in the grates that was used in those years. But uh, I think I'm going to keep this grate and uh, see, if, see if it's usable. I, right now, I wouldn't be afraid to throw some food on this thing right now. Just from getting it good and hot and uh, smoking it out and burning it out. I think it's in a usable shape now, but I'm I'm just gonna let this uh, keep keep burning wide open. Of course, I don't have a bottom uh, vent to close, so I'm gonna have to run it till it's dead. But uh, I think this is gonna be usable. So when I went to put this on, I was kind of concerned that it wasn't gonna fit right uh, since this was an original kettle instead of the master touch or the premium that had this bowl but what you do is these will just clip in these little tabs clip in right under the leg and you just lift the leg up a little bit just raise that up and these snap right underneath it that leg goes back down on top of it and it feels really sturdy i've seen some videos where they've come in and attached this too with a with like a little stainless steel clamp like a worm clamp but it doesn't look like that's going to be needed so i just i just fished that handle in the little slot and just eased it around i didn't try to pull on it too much because i think this is made of aluminum it's pretty thin you bend it pretty easy that's all you do is just lift these legs up and snap those little tabs underneath the legs it looks pretty easy so on this old kettle the uh the bottom looks a little different than the newer ones it's like a like a big, big bolt or nut or something. It had a little thumb screw right there. Because it's so rusted it just snapped off when I was trying to get it off. I'm probably just going to have to take an angle grinder and cut this off. Probably up closer to here. It's just, I mean, it won't move. It's all rusted on. So I'm just going to cut that off. So we got that cut off. I used a little Sawzall. But I got into the metal right here. From the inside, you can tell it's uh, this one right here. It's cut, so I may just take my welder and just tack that back together. It's a little bit of a gap right there. So needs a little bit of welding on that. I have to put a little tack weld in this thing just to hold it together right there, and that seems to be doing just fine. So that's gonna straighten it out what I could, but it's still a little bent. Something hit it really hard, warped this whole thing. But I think that's going to be straight enough for what I'm doing. I may push that out a little more. But other than that, that's, that piece was really hard to get off. So next, I've, uh, I've taken the handle off of this one. And what I did was I took an angle grinder with a cutting wheel and just went in there and cut that ha old handle off because it's tack welded on. And then I took my new my new handle that I ordered with the heat shield and just 
lined it up on this side and drilled that hole first and then marked where the next hole was going to go and drilled it second so I, I made sure that this fit right and then i went back with some high heat paint and painted over where i'd grinded so I, I cut it off close as i could and then i took a grinder and smoothed it out so this is gonna sit in there like that so this new heat shield so this this grill is going to be more like a master touch addition uh with the uh, uh the little pan to, or the bucket to empty the ash the little uh, adjustment that tells you where you're at so uh, I, i'm locking this a few more things to do and then i got to get the sweeper assembly uh added to that old one and I went ahead and took the old handle and just hammered that one out a little bit straighter and put it on. So that's going to work for that lid. Uh, that's working. So uh, we're, we're getting close. So I got it done. Got my handle with the heat shield on my original one. I had already upgraded to the cool touch handle like the master touch has. I ordered a new grill, great, it has the removable center section in it, and uh, the flip up sides, my old one was just solid all the way around, didn't have the flip up sides, so this is the master touch style, the only thing that's missing, um, the upgraded ash catcher, so the reason I did that, the, the saucer, that I put on this one, the old style saucer, to replace it for this old grill, because it, it was missing. It was gonna be about $30. And so I found this one $65 shipped. So um, it was worth it to me to upgrade my old one to the, uh, the new style. And um, with the new grates, the new sweeper, the new handle, um, I think that's all the parts that I purchased. Um, oh, and the new sweeper arms for the for the old one. The old sweeper arms were dead, so I, I ordered a new set for that. Um, all of that cost $162, I think, uh, total. So I had to make the decision, was, was it worth it to spend that on fixing this old grill to where it was usable and upgrading mine to a more of a master touch style it was to me because uh to buy a master touch new it's about 275 dollars out the door tax and all that uh, just about anywhere you buy them now so um so it was worth it to me it was a little bit expensive uh, i could have got a, a second original kettle uh for about the same cost maybe a little less than what i spent to upgrade this but this kettle was free and it just needed a little bit of work. Um, one of the downsides, um, when I was trying to weld that little piece back in at the bottom, these grills, the metal is so thin, it's really hard to weld. And you just blast right through it. So, uh, so I found that anytime I need to weld on these, I've had to do it a couple of times, just get a thin piece of metal. So you can see how thin that is. Um, I don't know what gauge this is, but it's, it's floppy. And just cut you a piece off and weld on top of it so so just grind it down put your piece on top of it and then just kind of weld on top of this piece and it'll stick it'll stick through and stick to the the metal so that's what i had to do on the bottom of this is just add a little add a little chunk of thin metal to it so anytime you have to work on these they're really durable um this thing's been sitting out forever and uh it's still in pretty good shape I'm going to take the old grate that was out of this one and put it in here. I've just got it in my in my Weber Smoky Mountain as a third grate. I uh, had a big cook last week, so I'll dig that out next time I open my smoker up. And probably, this is probably going to be my dedicated um, pizza oven grate for the top grate. Um, or maybe even dedicated for the bottom grate and just leave it sticking in there all the time. It's a heavy grate, but it just didn't clean up real well. So I don't, I don't think I want to cook on it, but, uh, that's it. That's what I did. 
and uh i think it's gonna be uh, a big upgrade for my for my old one the only difference is it doesn't have the handle with the catches and it doesn't have the lid catch so uh, the master touch has that on the um uh, on the master touch but other than that i've i've upgraded this to a to a, a more expensive grill and uh, i think this has got a lot more years left in it i think i got uh hopefully another 15 years of hard cooking on this thing so uh i appreciate y'all watching this uh, see you later